Welcome to the Marketing Boost Solutions Podcast. Join host Marco Torres, co-founder of MarketingBoost.com, along with expert guests as they deliver incredible proven solutions to your marketing challenges in each power-packed episode. Captain Marco has guided thousands of entrepreneurs, growing their sales and marketing through the use of value-add incentives. His Facebook groups are home to more than 84,000 entrepreneurs who are raking in sales with his advice. Get ready to be blown away with game-changing lessons for your business. Welcome to the Marketing Boost Solutions podcast show. It's my pleasure to bring to you another amazing guest, Matt Kastner. Matt got his start in Kansas City with his own ad agency, actually with an, in an ad agency in the corporate marketing culture in the mid-90s and wishing to do a whole lot more with his young family. He left a corporate cubicle in 2003 and founded his freelance design studio, Red Logic Communications, Inc., uh, Red Logic started in a small rural Kansas City with a population of only 650 people. Years later, Matt is still rocking the solopreneur life, the life, uh, laptop lifestyle, I would imagine as well. Uh, from that small town, he has served hundreds of clients and brands around the world, brands like Aflac, Adidas, uh, And One, Click, uh, Chick-fil-A, and many others with a lifetime client value reaching as much as over $1.5 million. Today, Matt teaches other freelancers uh, to be the CEO of their business, FreelanceCEO.com. Matt helps them uh, launch and scale and be sustainable, purposeful, and profitable businesses. Matt is also the host of his own Freelance CEO podcast and the founder of the Purpose to Profit Design Business Summit. So welcome, Matt Kastner. Let's take it away. Say hello. Hey, Marcus. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me on, and it's a privilege to be with you today. Oh, it's my pleasure to have you, Matt. I mean, uh, uh, you know, we've I've listened to your show. You're a, a colleague in the podcasting world, so we reached out to you and I'm thank thankful that you joined us on the show to provide some inspiration to our business owner community, our marketing community on uh, how to grow and scale and compete in a business. I mean, if uh, in your industry niche, graphic designers, I mean, there's, I don't know, I can't even put a, I wouldn't even dare to try to put a number on how many there are around the world now. And it's a fun and exciting business to be in the, the, the creative side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always enjoyed, you know, tweaking the, and, and, and putting, doing my best to kind of come up with a graphic that I can send off to some <laughs> freelancer and say, please make this something special. <laughs> exactly. so, uh, uh, but you know, the competition on Fiverr and everything else is so grand. How did you do it, Matt? And how do you teach others today to, let's start with your story, how you, you know, you went from the corporate world and, yeah. and dared to go out on your own. And uh, how did you, how did you, you know, survive that? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. My story started, uh, you know, got a, got a job working in uh, the agency culture in Kansas City. Uh, you know, it's a very, uh, a very fun city to work in if you're in marketing and advertising and was able to uh, spend some time kind of learning my, my, uh, my craft, uh, working for some of the big agencies in Kansas City and then also some of the uh, larger uh, uh, marketing departments in Kansas City, Sprint, uh, would be uh, probably the most uh, well-known name that uh, people might recognize. But, you know, after a while, Marcos, and this is just uh, me, I just, I got, I got bored. And, and for me, you know, I spent a lot of time, I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner, and was just finding that the positions that I was in were just not all I wanted. Uh, there were things that I wanted to do that I could not do. There were clients that I wanted to serve that I could not serve. Uh, there was limitations with income, you know, when you're getting a, a salary, I mean, that's great. You get benefits. That's great. Um, but you know what, there's a, there's a lid and I didn't like that lid. And so, you know, this is back in the, this is back in the two thousands, you know, we're right after Y2K and, you know, I told my wife, I said, you know, I think there's a chance that I might be able to do my work remotely. Back in the day, it was called telecommuting, and instead of having a cell phone, I had a pager on my hip. So if that dates that dates me at all, 
And, you know, it wasn't in vogue to work from home, but I knew my, my job was internet related. Um, I could do my job from anywhere, provided I had the right computer and internet connection. So I approached my boss and, and I said, listen, would you consider a, uh, a, a maybe a, a trial to see if this thing would work? And my boss was very fair and understanding. He said, sure, why not? And, uh, you know, three months later, we had gone from two days a week out of the office to three days a week. And my wife and I were looking at each other going, well, gosh, we could really do this, you know, just about anywhere, couldn't we? And so we left the city. I, we left Kansas City and found a small town, which is where I'm at right now. Mound City, Kansas has a population of 650 people. There's not even a stoplight in the county, maybe 7,000 people total. And I put my stake in the ground and I said, I'm, I'm going to try this business thing out. And, uh, and so that's where it got started. I had a a prior boss that had worked with me. And, um, you know, one of the things that I teach the people that I work with is if you're in a nine to five and you're frustrated, I get that. But relationships matter so much in business. And whether you're, you know, you have a, a Fortune 500, you know, company, or if you're a solopreneur like myself, relationships count. And so I tell people if you're getting ready to, you know, cut the ties and do your own thing, don't burn bridges. Because it's those relationships you have that will help you get forward in the long run. And I leaned on a lot of my professional relationships that I had from the agency world, from the corporate marketing world. And those relationships were the catalyst and the foundation for me to be able to build a business now that uh, I have today. Uh, you mentioned in my bio, I have clients that I have now served as a full-time freelancer for over 15 years and I have multiple clients with lifetime values over $1.5 million. And so that's, you know, people talk about feast or famine. People talk about, you know, how do you compete with Fiverr? How do you compete with Upwork? How do you compete with this gig economy where, you know, everybody's looking for a bargain? Well, I think there's a place for everybody. And I think if you're willing to do more than just the design work, if you're willing to learn how to solve a business problem, I think as a designer, you can make a pretty good niche for yourself. And I think, um, you know, maybe my story is just one example, but I work with, you know, hundreds of designers and, you know, I help them move out of the, the quote unquote designer role, order taker role into the CEO role. And I help them understand that, you know, you can't just sit back and wait for the work to come to you. You've got to establish yourself, whether, you, you know, like I said, a business is going to do that. As an entrepreneur, as a solopreneur, you've got to you've got to put yourself out there and you've got to let people know what you can do and what problems you can solve. But that was the genesis 15 years ago. And uh, proud to say, still kicking, still going strong. That's awesome. I mean, you were an early adapter in 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 uh, remote work and taking the idea of saying, I want to work from home and and leveraging your relationships to say, hey, you have been working with you all this time. How about we uh how about we continue to work together and I would, you know, and so forth. And for anybody listening, that means that you're, you know, if you are working for a company and you, of course you may not want to go solicit the clients of that company, but, but, you know, after you leave those relationships that you talk about, if you've got relationships, you can reach out to them and say, Hey, I'm on my own now. And, you know, the, you may pick up clients that you used to, you know, handle working for them and so on. Um, you know, this is a great story, Matt. I appreciate that. So, you know, I would imagine you have clients that do or you help people that are uh, outside of just being designers as well that fall into your world and, and to uh, or is it in, in when it comes to your service, you really focus on on the niche of helping other designers be more than just designers. Designers are probably the people that I understand the most. I understand what it's like to be a designer because I am one. But you know, you know, being in the being in the marketing community for so long, you know, I've gotten to I've gotten to meet and and become friends with and understand you know other roles that are in the marketing world. So I yeah, you're right. Besides just designers, I work with copywriters, I work with photographers, I work with social media people. Basically, anybody who has a marketable skill, someone who solves a business problem, um, I've I've usually got an opportunity for them. Yeah, that's the key because you're looking and, and you're even if they because if they're in one of those roles, you're guiding them to how to create and solve problems for other business owners by bringing all those pieces together. 
So you're helping them, you know, like, hey, let's let's solve the problem for them. Let's bring them the photographer, the videographer. Let's help them put their whole marketing strategy campaign together versus just, you know, here's a couple of art, you know, graphic pieces for you and hope they come back and order more. Right. Um, so you get that, dive into that some more, uh, Matt. Tell us how you. I mean, I know on your website you offer the blueprint uh, and a number of things that are available that people can go grab for free, from what I understand. Yeah. Um, but so tell us a bit about that. But you know, and uh, tell us more about if they were to uh, what you, how you guide people with the clients that you serve. Not only to your clients that you serve as a, as a graphic artist, but the community you have that I found very interesting. You have like a huge community of uh, graphic artists, freelancers, and others that are part of your your community. Well, you know, okay, so you know, I'm helping I'm helping people figure out some of the things that it took me 15 years to figure out. I, I, I tell people, Marcos, I don't have, I don't have an MBA. I don't have a business degree. I don't have a marketing degree. Uh, you know, my, my technical training and my, my, you know, formal training is all in graphic design. And, you know, I had to learn all the business side of things, you know, the marketing, I had to learn, you know, how to set up my, uh, my payment and invoicing systems, how to pitch up client, you know, those were things that if you've worked in an agency before, you know, you sit in a cubicle and people hand you the work, well, you're not necessarily, you know, interested or, or know anything about, you know, project management or, uh, you know, client, uh, client management and onboarding and, and, and all those sorts of things. And so um, I learned that, you know, these are things that I've picked up over time. And, you know, several years ago, when I started my coaching group, one thing was very apparent to me, it's that, Everybody was coming with, you know, a very uh, different set of uh, business foundations. Some knew more than others in, in language specifically. And, you know, having a conversation with some of my people was, was tough because I found myself having to lay a lot of foundational framework business-wise with these people before we could really get in and, and tackle the tough problems that they were facing. So a couple of years ago, uh, I developed what's called the, uh, the Business Academy. And it's a part of my, my group. And it's, used, it's, a, it's an eight-week coaching program that people who come into my group go through. And what that does is it gives them a solid business foundation and understanding. It gives them a common language, a common knowledge base. And then when we tackle the problems of literally building and scaling a freelance business, everybody that comes in now has a, a baseline of information that we can reference, that we can build upon. And that in the last couple of years has been a couple of things that I've implemented. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about because it's helping me help people get faster progress um, because we are, we're, we're moving together at the same pace. I love it. I love it. And so how long have you had that the particular business coaching as part of your, your model? Um, that's a great question. Only a few, only a few years. Um, before the pandemic, uh, you know, I was starting to get up on some stages and I was starting to share at uh, technical and uh, web, web design and graphic design conferences. And, you know, there would be during breakout sessions, I would be getting a lot of these questions from, you know, people that were in agency like myself uh, at the time who were trying to break out and they were asking me all these freelance questions. And at that time, the coaching wasn't even on my radar. But it was kind of like I read the writing on the wall and I'm like, well, these people are these people need a guide. These people need uh, someone who they can trust. And truthfully, you know, back in the early 2000s, I, I would have paid a lot of money uh, to get in a room with somebody who could have given me the, the, the roadmap. Uh, that's what my blueprint is. It really is the roadmap that uh, I have put together. And it's kind of the foundation for what my academy is that gives people that. Uh, that knowledge that they need. And so anyway, yeah, no, I've only been doing it for a few years and uh, I love it though. I, and Marcos, you, you know this, that when you can help a business owner start to thrive, I mean, there's, there's no other feeling like it. It's, it's when you see them being able to succeed and, and, and I hope we get to talk about this later, but as a freelancer, we're, we're limited in terms of how we can scale and grow our business because uh, our, our greatest commodity is time, but it's also it's also very finite. And so yeah. having an ability to to be able to scale, multiply revenue, uh, you know, create multiple streams of revenue as a freelancer is something that I totally geek out about. 
because when you have when you have a way to generate revenue in multiple ways, you really take that lid off of your own financial opportunities. By the way, folks, if you're listening one way, be not now, but after the show, you can find more about Matt at FreelanceCEO.com, FreelanceCEO.com, and learn more about Matt Kastner's uh, amazing programs and coaching and podcast and blogs, et cetera. Let's take a break from here from one of our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Marketing Boost Solutions podcast. We are here with an expert in freelancing, Matt Kastner, who coaches and teaches freelancers to succeed, grow their business. And uh, so if you're a freelancer of any kind, and especially if you're a graphic artist, then listen in and take notes as Matt is sharing some wisdom and some uh, value bombs that are powerful. So, uh, Matt, getting back to your story and how, you know, you're coaching other business owners, what are some of the, you know, highlights that, you know, that you first, uh, like your blueprint, uh, I just downloaded that, but I haven't had a chance to go through that yet and read that. But what are some of those, you know, bullet points, takeaways that are some of the first steps, somebody looking or starting or already a freelancer who's kind of struggling and looking at, you know, how, why, how can I acquire more clients? What are some of the first steps they ought to be doing? Yeah. Uh, so the blueprint for me was a way for me to kind of condense in a in a digestible version, kind of what I think some of the big rocks are for freelancers. And I'll mention a, a few of them here. I, I feel like one of the things that I deal with virtually every freelancer is how they position themselves as an expert. And, and most of it's about identity. And you, you go into Fiverr and you go into uh, you go into Upwork and, and, and the design, the designer is a commodity today. And so one of the things that I help them do, and they explain this in the blueprint is that how important it is for us to communicate our expertise. And it's not in our ability to use Photoshop. It's not in our ability to use Illustrator or WordPress. Our expertise is in our ability to help a business owner solve a branding problem, solve a sales problem, sell a, a, uh, a conversion problem, whether it's, whether it's through printed media, whether it's through uh, their branding or whether it's through web design. And so that's one of the things that I, I talk about with, with business owners uh, that are freelancers right away is how do you position yourself? Because honestly, if you can't explain to somebody what you do and who you serve, you know, you might be looking for work for a really long time, but as soon as someone knows that problem that you can solve for them, and if you're good, then, then you've got an opportunity to build a business. So that's just one example. The other one, and I'll tell you this, this gets people all the time, is their numbers. Uh, if you're not a numbers guy, you have to learn how to be a numbers guy. Because if you are a business owner, you have to know your numbers. You have to know what's coming in and what's going out. Um, we all want to be profitable. And being profitable is very simple. It's earning more than you spend. And, 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 you know, there are simple things that I take young business owners through that help them develop a mindset of earning. And to develop a mindset of earning, you have to be disciplined. You have to look at your numbers and you have to be smart with the decisions you make. So uh, just a couple of things. And I have to say that those are probably two of the big ones. The third one um, is, is pricing and presentation. A lot of a lot of freelancers uh, are would would probably rather not get out in front of people, but I can tell you that the most successful ones are ones that are highly engaging and that are not scared to get in front of a client and have those discussions. So we talk a lot about mindset. We talk about you know how do you communicate your value to a customer. And then at the end of the day, how do you how do you win that work? How do you how do you provide that work? And uh, my my favorite thing about being a freelancer, how do you get paid again and again? How do you make that client a client for life? That comes through service and support, and and having just a, an excellent customer experience. Those are sorts of things that I discuss in the in the blueprint, giving people that roadmap to me for me. Uh, and I'm just speaking out of my own experience. These are things that I have I have done in my own business that have have been tried and tested over 15 years and I know they work. So I have no problem sharing that with somebody else. Cool, Matt. That's awesome. 
and um, you know, helping others, as you say, guiding other freelancers. Notice the business model there, guys. You know, whatever uh, he took what he was an expert at, which was freelancing, and saw a niche, saw an opportunity that others were around him were like asking, you know, how do you do it? Uh, and saw an opportunity that to create an academy, to create a, a coaching business uh, in addition to his own freelancing business, if I understand everything you provide properly. And he goes, wait a minute, I've got a whole bunch of people, colleagues that are asking me questions. And you're like, I might as well turn this into an additional business of supporting and helping other, other freelancers of various kinds be successful. When you do that, let me ask you, when it comes to freelancers, What's one of the ways or the most popular or successful ways? How would I go about if I was a freelancer, to, you know, uh, outside of just publishing my work on, you know, like we were talking about the different websites out there like Fiverr and others, Upwork. How would I go about getting in front of more prospects? What do you coach them on the mm. actual marketing of themselves? So I've got three, I've got three tips for you. The first one I call the, the client snowball. And I, and I detail this at clientsnowball.com. But if I can't, I'll just break this down for you very simply. It's a, it's a four-step process. And it's all built around client success stories. And I tell people, I can help you get started as a freelancer, even if your first gig isn't a paying gig. A lot of people get hung up on the money. What I coach the, the designers that I work with and the freelancers that I work with, don't be focused on the money at first. Be focused on getting your client results. When you get your client results, you're going to have a happy customer, okay? So if you kind of think about the, the numbers on a clock at 12 noon is, is the sale. And I would even say that that could be a pro bono job. It could be somebody that you want to work with, but maybe don't have a, a contract. You do some work for them, and then at the three o'clock position, uh, you get results for that client. So you work and you serve them and you get a result. At the six o'clock position in the clock, I call it the story position. That's where you are going to take the feedback, the story, the testimonial from that client and that's going to be something I coach my students to be very diligent about collecting those testimonials. We live in an Amazon age and you don't buy anything off of Amazon without reading those reviews first. And people are so conditioned to, to, to transferring trust to a product in terms of me giving money for a product in Amazon, because I read enough positive reviews that convinced me that what I'm going to invest in is going to give me what I, what I want. And when I coach my freelancers, I'm like, you get that story because that is your review. And other potential people that are going to come to you are going to, to trust you because you can transfer that trust through the story of a past client. So the last step in the stage is the nine o'clock position. And that is share the story. So you, you put it in your social, you put it on your website, you put it on your email, you put it in your newsletter, you write a blog about it, you do a case study, and you let that become a cycle. I call it the snowball. And when someone sees that review, it's going gonna, it's gonna to encourage them to work with you, and the cycle starts all over again. So this, this, this habit of collecting stories and sharing stories of clients that you've gotten results for is a huge strategy for me. But I have two more. I have what I call the, the net fishing strategy. Um, that's going to be like, you know, if you've got a social, if you've got a social account where, you're, where your people are hanging out, make sure you're posting there regularly. It doesn't have to be a ton, but just be consistent. Right now, if anybody's paying attention to, to YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, vertical video is blowing up. And if you can record a seven second video that gives value to your clients, you can grow. Uh, you can grow an audience like gangbusters, and if you can present yourself as the expert, uh, that's going to be a way for you to grow an audience real fast. So I call that my net fishing strategy. Okay, the last one that I have is called my spear fishing strategy, and I have two ways that uh, I, I typically recommend uh, spear fishing. Number one is be a helper, and I, what I mean is. Go into these social media groups, these Facebook groups, these LinkedIn groups. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's an online community. And be a helper. 
Find people that are asking questions, people that are having issues that are related to your expertise, and don't go in and pitch them. Offer them help. Offer some feedback. Offer some suggestions. Be the, be the unspoken expert in the room. And let people, let people, let that, let your authority transfer through that, uh, through that helpful message. And it's, it's, it's crazy, but it works. People will, people will, will look at your profile. They'll check you out. And because you were willing to come in and share some value, uh, you're building trust. To me, trust is the number one thing that we need to build with a customer to get them to invest money with us. And so for me, being that helper in that social media group is, uh, is helpful. The second spear phishing technique that I use is to simply do uh, you know, workshops online, in person, whether it's with a chamber group, uh, a special interest group, a meetup, or whether it's online through a workshop or webinar, offer, your, offer some free value in a, in a 45 or 90 minute format, invite people that you think could benefit from it and build some rapport, build uh, some authority uh, answer people's questions, take them through step one of whatever your, your process is and allow people to see you. That allows them to, to know you, hopefully like you, and then hopefully trust you. Um, but I tell people, it's like, you know, we, since COVID, this whole Zoom thing now has become a part of our lexicon. No one is afraid of Zoom anymore. Exactly. Nobody is, and it allows you and me to have this conversation. I'm in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, right now. I'm down in Florida, so I'm yeah, exactly can... right. And we're having this conversation, and we could be sitting in the same room together. Uh -huh. And and there is nothing that can stop anybody who wants to pursue it if they have the knowledge and the expertise, and they know what problems they can solve to invite some people in, who could who who could benefit from some knowledge that they have. And through a workshop or a webinar, start to have a, 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 little, a little event that you can invite people to. So anyway, that's what I tell people. I'm like, you know, it takes work. Yeah, yeah there's, no, there's no free lunches in this world. You know that, Marcos. Exactly. Um, but we live in an era today. And, and I dare say this. I would not be sitting here right now if it were not for my internet connection my, and my webcam. Uh -huh. But because of that, I'm not restricted. My clients do not care where I live. If I tell them, they ask me where that is, but they don't care. Right. All they care about is, is that I get the work done for them and it's done well. How do you compete with, um, you know, the graphic artist teams available in Philippines and India and, you know, overseas that are, you know, priced ridiculously low and how do you hold your price or how do you teach others to hold their price compared to the, you know, overseas uh, competition? That's, that's great. Well, a couple of thoughts. Number, number one, you, you raise your prices as demand increases. So you have to have a baseline, of course, of what you're going to charge and I, and I believe that if you're providing an excellent service, I believe that you don't need to be the bottom of the price barrel. And I told you about how I use these success stories. Uh, these success stories are a way to, to, to build value into your price because other people have trusted you and you have delivered, which means you're going to do it again. And from a value standpoint, I like to work, I like to work with businesses who've got some skin in the game. I want them to come to me with a with a business problem because they've got money on their end that's on the line. I, I don't tell businesses, don't, don't come here to donate money to me. I'm not here. I'm an investment. You're going to invest right. money to me and you better, you better be hoping to get a return because that's what I'm here to do. Huh. So that's what I tell my customers. It's like you go in and get the results for the client. You give them what they want. You solve their business problem. You know, most business, most business owners come and talk to designers because they need a new logo or need a new brand. Well, why is that? Well, they want better positioning in their market. They want to stand out ahead of the competition. What's that mean? They want to make more sales. Exactly. And so they, at the bottom line, there's a sale hinging on the, and so you want to talk to somebody in the Philippines who's a, a great designer, but doesn't really care about the result. 
or understand it or, or you understand might, you find it. yourself you find yourself working twice as hard with them because you keep telling them you don't understand where i'm trying to go with this please you know yada yada you know i i tell people when they when they you know they they do the, the price battle it always happens well i could go on fiverr and i could go hire somebody i don't i don't discourage them from that go for it roll the dice i'll talk to you soon exactly and, and, and you know what? I think Fiverr has a place. I'm not even I'm not even telling people you can't get good work in Fiverr. You can. Um, but but I believe that there are people that want you to be on their team for more than just being the design guy. Mm -hmm. And if you understand a little bit about marketing and as a freelancer, you know a little bit about business because you are a business owner. You can apply a lot of practical knowledge to that, and that helps you out. Uh, with your relationship with, with your client. And I'll say this also, Marcos, as a, as a freelancer, if you've got a few clients paying you well, you don't need to find thousands. Exactly. Now, Matt, before we move on, uh, what I wanted to bring up here is we're kind of talking about, you know, graphic design and and what have you but if you guys are listening carefully this all of the things we're talking about all of the things matt is suggesting here apply whether you're a realtor an insurance agent whether if you're essentially a standalone if you're in business for yourself and you are providing a service or you know to others especially a service where you're this is the type of steps you need to take to acquire more clients whether it be you know as you brought out of the gate is one thing i i have said before many times but often forget to remind people of is, uh, you know, maybe even working for free, freely, you know, at the, at the beginning or very low cost in order to grab those original clients that you're going to deliver on, that you're going to then ask for testimonials, be it written or video testimonials. Uh, by the way, if you don't know Marketing Boost, guys, is one of the things that we've done and built our entire industry on. We started in the travel business, and those of you who know us know we have thousands, tens of thousands of video reviews, more than any other company in the world, by doing exactly this. We've delivered and given them amazing vacations, and while they were on vacation, we would ask them, you know, we have, we have a system, and our system in place, which, by the way, Matt, anybody listening can do this as well. We had a, created a system of surveying our client when we expected they were at their peak of, sat, of satisfaction with us. And so when they were, uh, you know, which in my case was the day after they checked into the hotel, but in Matt's case, it's probably the day after he delivered, you know, a, a beautiful uh, creative that they loved or after they launched an ad campaign and it started to really work and blow up. And then they're like, wow, this was amazing. That's when you need to be right on there to ask, hey, can I ask you? So when you're there, you expect them to be satisfied is when you're doing a survey. In our case, it was just a digital survey, text and email because they're on vacation. And we'd send them a message saying, hey, how do we live up? How are we living up to your expectations? Can you give us a star rating of one to five? If we got a four or five, then we were immediately responding back with, would you help us tell others and film a selfie video of that hotel, you know, and, and brag about that hotel brand and our brand. And if you do, we'll reward you with what? A bonus vacation. And that was the birth of what became marketingboost.com today, where we provide these complimentary hotel stays in 130 destinations around the world. If you're listening, here's my elevator pitch for Marketing Boost. We provide the wow, surprise, and delight factor to give uh, business owners like you, if you're listening, the ability to give away these complimentary hotel stays and hotel savings vouchers and restaurant vouchers. But we would often use those as a, as a reward for going an extra mile, maybe posting a review on more than one of my of, of uh, the third party review sites that uh, that we're on. Uh, we would ask them to film a selfie video testimonial and, and offer them a reward. So we are not trying to, uh, uh, bribe them for a review in general, but bribe them for going the extra mile, for example, posting this multiple reviews in several places. And then we would throttle them, Matt. One of the things we would do is we throttle we, these reviews as they were coming in. We were asking for, you know, sending them a message, please post it here on Google My Business. The next few clients, we'd say, please post them here on Facebook. The next ones, please post it on Trustpilot. Please post it on Site Jabber. Please post, you know, and so on. And before we know it, we end up with thousands, thousands of thousands of written reviews and video reviews on multiple third-party review sites. And then Google has no choice now but to see all of these third-party reviews coming in when somebody searches one of our brand names and boom, 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 you know, we're there. 
So it's it's the technique that uh, that works. Whether you're getting, you know, onesies, twosies reviews, you got to have them, and and then those reviews is what you use to sell yourself to the next client. You're like, look, we're not the cheapest in the world, but I want to show you what others have said about us. And you're sending them those messages. You're showing them that on your website. You're showing them on your Zoom call uh, pitch. You know, it's like. Here's why you're going to be satisfied. Look at what others have said about me. Look what this, let's watch this video review of one of my last clients ad campaigns, you know, boom, if you can get both video and written reviews, you know, you've, you've got the social proof that is absolutely necessary in today's world to build a business. And that's uh, one of the ways, again, you know, marketing boost can actually help you accomplish that. So look us up at marketingboost.com and get a free trial and check it out. Now, back to you, Matt. Give us some more. Uh, we're, uh, we're in here for 40 minutes. I appreciate your time so far. What else can you share? Some additional insights in success. Yeah, no, I can, uh, I, I can say that if you are a person who has ever thought about running a business, but you've always wondered if you could, it, for me, one of the one of the biggest joys of of doing what I do now, working with these freelancers, is is helping them really to become their best self. And you know, when when I came when I came home, I, I came home for 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 a couple of of reasons. One was I, I really wanted to take the ceiling off the top of my head in terms of potential. But the second one was I really wanted to spend more time with my family. My 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 two kids at the time were both under two. And I was, I mentioned having that pager on my hip. I was working 60 hour weeks. I was away from home. And and I was like, I this is killing me. And I wanted to be able to to be present when my kids were little. Uh those two that were uh that, that were little in the house uh were joined by two other siblings, and those two older ones were married last year. So I look back over the past 15 years and 15, 20 years, and, I, and I'm, I'm blown away and I'm blessed because I've got to have time with my kids that, that no amount of money, Marcos, would ever, ever be able to cover what those experiences were. And so for me, part of what is hard, what's hard about being a business owner, and, and I talk about this, it's work. So much of business is mindset. And if someone doesn't have a crystal clear why, if they don't understand why they're doing the business, then when they have tough days, when the clients are, are hard to, to bring in, it, it, you're going to feel that pull back to the cubicle. But for me, uh, you know what, they, it was going to be, it was going to be a hard sell. I, I call myself genetically unemployable. Um, and I love working with other people who have that desire and they know they've got it in them and they just need a little bit of push. So long story to, to my next tip. So much of being a business owner, whether you're a designer, a copywriter, a realtor is what, what daily habits do you have? What, where's your mindset? How do you start your day? And, you know, having, you know, 15 years of full-time business ownership under my belt, I can tell you one uh, one key for me, it's it's showing up every day. You know, if you're going to your laptop, if you're going to your home office or whatever it is, it's showing up every day. It's being intentional that I'm going to be a business owner today, and I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna do the little things. I I tell the people that I coach, it's the little things that you do every day that are way more important than the things that you do once in a while. And I have a, I have a, a little a, a principle. Uh, I call it the pebble principle. Now I live in Kansas. Now you live, you live near a lot of water in Florida. And unfortunately, we don't have any beaches in Kansas, but we do have lots of rivers, rock, uh, rivers, lakes, and ponds. And as a little kid, I used to love to go to the pond with my granddad, and I'd go find the smoothest, flattest rock I could find. And I'd chuck that thing out and I'd skip that thing across the pond. And I watched that, that rock skip. And as it, as it skipped, it created ripples. And for me, I've developed this thing called the pebble principle and I teach it to my people. 
It's if you can find three pebbles every day and you can toss them into your pond every day and create a set of ripples every day, that's going to set you up for business weeks, months, years down the road. Well, the work that we do today is a result of the, the preparatory work we did earlier. So I find, I find something that I can do every day. I have a, I have a, a as, I, as I start my day, I have my sheet of paper and I write down my, my, my priorities for the day and I circle three things that are going to be my pebbles. Write an email. Connect with a past client. Reach out to a prospective client. Do something on my social. Share a story. Share a post, share a tip, go into a, a, a Facebook group and, and help somebody. Just, just three things. I, 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 don't, I don't overwhelm myself, but if I can do three things a day that are business building activities, and they don't have to be long, they could be five minute, five minute things, a five minute email to a past client, somebody saying thank you to a client for being a, 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 a good customer. You know, little touch points like that will build a business. And, and I tell my people, if you don't get all your pebbles thrown in the water that day, then, then don't hang it over your head. Don't beat yourself up. Don't have guilt. Don't carry over all your missed work to the next day. <laughs> reset the counters at zero. When you wake up in the morning and you get your cup of coffee, reset your counters to zero, and it's January 1st. Do three things that day and move on. We, 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 we get in our way all the time. I, I, I talk about mindset probably more than I talk about anything else with the people that I work with. Guilt, imposter syndrome. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with the, the frustrations and the, and the self-talk? As freelancers, we end up working by ourselves a lot of the time. And that's, Part of the reason why my community has been so good is that it gives people a chance to connect with others who are in the exact same boat, who are dealing with the same stuff, and they realize that I'm not in the boat alone. That's powerful. Sounds like a sermon, man. You've got me ready to hear the, <laughs> the tone of your voice and everything brought me oh my to gosh. almost ready to, you know. Praise God for that. <laughs> and truthfully, yes, I do. Amen. That was a beautiful, almost a sermon there, the inspiration there, the three uh, pebbles. I really love that. Three pebbles every day, three things to building, uh, business building steps. That if you do them every day, along with everything else you got to do, you are in the process of moving things forward and planting seeds that will come and bear fruit down the road. Uh, powerful, powerful message there. Matt, you've been an amazing speaker, amazing guest today on our show. I really, really thank you for being with us. Uh, those of you listening to us, we thank you for your time and your uh, attention to the Marketing Boost podcast. Uh, obviously, you can find out more about Marketing Boost at uh, marketingboostsolutions.com, where we have a number of bonuses there, additional products, and or marketingboost.com. Uh, go book a free on marketingboost.com, book a free demo with our staff, a brainstorming call. We'll show you how you can use travel incentives to boost your business. And Matt, if you'll tell us more again, remind us how we can find you and your services and uh, sign up, you know, with your community. Yeah. If you are interested in more, I would, I would love for you to visit uh, freelanceceo.com. You can get my free blueprint at uh, freelanceceo.com forward slash blueprint. Um, if you would love to check out my community, I would love for you to go to community.freelanceceo.com. We'd love to uh, love to meet you. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that, Matt. And uh, folks, stay stay thirsty, my friends, as I like to stay. Stay thirsty for knowledge. You know, the, one of the first things that Matt said at the beginning of our conversation today was he's been a lifelong learner. And uh, I will say that that is, in, in my book, one of the most important things any entrepreneur can do. What are you learning? What are you reading? What are you studying? What courses? You know, it, 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 the old saying, it takes money to make money. 
But the first thing you need to invest in is yourself. Are you learning the tools with whatever your business is? Are you the best at it? Are you staying relevant to all of the new technology and the new uh, uh, ways to acquire clients? Are you, you know, what are you doing to keep improving your mind, your mindset, and your skills and abilities? So stay thirsty for knowledge, and we'll see you in the next show. Thank you very much, folks. Thanks for listening to another episode of Marketing Booth Solutions Podcast with your hosts, Captain Marco Torres. Now it's on you. Take the next step now. Go to marketingboothsolutions.com for more on how you can wow, delight, and surprise your clients with the most amazing draw card on the planet. So stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty for knowledge. See you next time.